In this video, we'll look at calculating probabilities using the normal distribution. Consider problems 50 through 55. In problems 50 through 54, we're given that the mean is 54 and the standard deviation is 8. In the beginning, we want to find probabilities given values for the random variable. To do this, hit second vars to go to the distribution menu, then select number 2, normal CDF. Tell it the values that you want to use for x. We want the values greater than 56. That means our lower bound is 56. We have no upper bound, so we put in a number very large, 10 to the 99. The calculator thinks of this number as infinity, thus finding all numbers greater than 56. The mean is 54, and the standard deviation is 8. And the probability is calculated. Suppose we wanted a probability for x less than 30, which is a number 51. Again, normal CDF. This time we have no lower bound, so we use negative 10 to the 99. We do have an upper bound. We don't want any number larger than 30, so we put 30 in for the upper bound. The mean and standard deviation stay the same. And that's the probability that x is less than 30. Let's skip ahead to problem uh, 54. In 54, uh, the mean is 6 and the standard deviation is 2, and we want the probability that x is between 3 and 9. This is the last situation, finding the probability that x is between two numbers. Of course, the calculator is best equipped to deal with these questions, since we already saw it wants two numbers to find the probability between. So just put in two numbers, 3 and 9, the mean in this case is 6, standard deviation is 2. Pasting that in, so you see the general syntax is left, comma, right, comma, mean, comma, standard deviation. If you have an older calculator, you'll have to memorize that syntax as the previous interface is not available. And there's the probability. Now, these questions can be all inverted, and we could be given a probability or percentage and be asked to find the value of the random variable that creates that. There's two types of these, uh, or I guess three types of these problems, but the most common is a percentile. If we're told to find, say, the 80th percentile, such as a number 52, then we need to do second bars and go to the inverse norm. Inverse norm wants the area to the left of a certain random variable value. Of course, the area to the left is the percentage lower than, which is the probability or percentile. So for the 80th percentile, the area is 0.8. The mean is, in this case, 54, and the standard deviation is 8. So put the mean and standard deviation that are given. Then paste in, and that will find the 80th percentile. Now, suppose we wanted to find the um, the uh, value of the random variable that created the um, third quartile. Um, or, let's see, let's see if there's a problem in here like this. Oh, here we go. We'll do number 49. The area to the right of x in a normal distribution is 0.543. So when you're given the area to the right, um, then we can also do this. Um, notice that when we do second vars and go to the inverse norm function, we have to give it an area to the left. So there's no other way of calculating these things other than getting area, giving an area to the left. So if you're given area to the right, such as in a problem like 49, then you need to just find the area to the left. Now if you remember that the total area is 1, then you'll know that the area to the left is 1 minus the area to the right. So do 1 minus the area to the right, and you can get the area to the left. And there's no mean or standard deviation given, but uh, you would put those in as they're given to you. So that will find the value of the random variable such that the area to the right is 0.543. Um, the last type is to find the 
value the random variable that gives up the middle. There we go. Uh, we'll look at number 34. So the mean is 15 and the standard deviation is 3 in number 34. And it says between what x values does 68.27% of the data lie? Data lie. So here we want to know what two values is the area between going to be 68.2%. Now if you look at the symmetry of the pictures, we have an appropriate picture. then you know that from the symmetry of the picture, if the area in the middle is some amount, the area in the outer tails has to be 1 minus that. Because again, the total area is 1. Now with the symmetry, you know the area in each of the outer tails is the same. So that you can then divide that in half and get the area just in the left tail. If you tell it the area to the left, that will then give you the line that marks off the middle on the left. Um, you can then add in the middle area with the left tail and get the total area to the left of the right marker. So going back to this problem, we have 68.2% in the middle. So we'd subtract that from 1. That's the area in the two tails. If we divide that by 2, that's the area in just the left tail. We'll now do the inverse norm of that. and then put in the mean and standard deviation. So 15 comma 3. All right, and that is the left bound for the middle 68.2%. Now, the area of the left tail is 0.15865 and the middle is 0.3173. So if we were or no, sorry, the middle is 0.6 Eight two seven. So if we add the middle to the area of the left tail, we get the total area of the middle and the left tail. That's the total area to the left of the right marker. Now, that's the number we want to put in, 84135. If we put that in to the calculator, it'll give us the other x value that we're looking for. So we know that 68.27% of the data lies between 11.9999 and 18.000, essentially between 12 and 18. So we can calculate the values of the random variable with a certain area in the middle, an area to the left, or an area to the right of a single value. And we can also calculate the probabilities between any two or to the left or to the right of any random variable values.